How you doing? I can't hear you. You can't hear me. <laughs> well, we both just changed it. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Robin. Hi there. Hi, Hi Robin. Hello. This, what are those painting? Are these photographs behind you, Ralph? The photo yes. The, the photograph on the wall is a very early map of the Chesapeake Bay area. Yeah. Drawn, and it's not a very accurate rendition. Nice. Yeah, how many, like, I mean, a couple hundred years ago, you mean? It's about 300 years old or something like that. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a facsimile of it. It's not, of course, the real thing. That's neat. How about you, Ralph? What's behind you? Well, the top, the top one is uh, River Road Presbyterian Church, which the, the, the building is still there, but the church is gone. And um, the, the bottom one is Celilo Falls on the Columbia River uh, before it was flooded over and destroyed. Uh, and it, it's a bunch of Celilo Indians uh, fishing for salmon. Neat. That's neat. Thank you for sharing. Hi, David. How you doing, Veronique? Hi. How are you? Good. Doing good. How you doing? All right. Um, back from our long trip and I'm busy doing stuff at work. Where were you again? Remind us. Cyprus and Israel. Cyprus and Israel. Oh, nice. So you were in Cyprus. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. I've been there. I spent four hours there on a boat to Greece. Uh, no. It was. It was a. We were there during a cold spell, and we got snowed on. Really? Yes. <laughs> Neat. That's, that's not what I think of Cyprus as actually. You know? yeah, that's. That's right, but we did go up uh, close to the top of Mount Olympus. Uh, I don't know if that is the Mount Olympus, but that is a Mount Olympus, and you know, there's a ski resort up there in so Cyprus. Huh. In Cyprus, neat. And you had a great time in uh, Israel. It, it was a, it was a good time in Israel. It was nice to be and meet uh, uh, my son-in-law's parents. We, we you know they got married in February 2020. And so we've been trying to get to Israel to meet them and, you know, and, and, and see oh. them for two years now. So you got to meet the in-laws for the first yep. time. <laughs> okay. And how about you, Veronique? What's going on in your world? Actually, I had to meet my in-laws also via Zoom because February 2020, they had a death in the family and the planned meeting never happened. Before that, the kids were leaving, were in inland, so it was never happening. And then we had to meet them via Zoom, and then they got married in 2021 on a rooftop in Brooklyn, so it kind of worked. But uh, I'm just back, actually, we went two weeks to uh, Saint-Martin on the French side, and uh, I'm training for a half Ironman, so I did my open water training and some, some my husband's running, so, so it, was, it was fun, and the weather was steady. So we were quite happy about this. Where is this? Your train? Saint Martin, like uh, in the Caribbean. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Did you say a triathlon, a half triathlon? I'm doing a half Ironman in Cambridge, Maryland. Wow, that is very impressive. Yeah, and so are my daughters, and so is my yeah. It's, it's a family thing. There's five of us, so it's kind of a cool. This is our event of the year. Some of us are proud of making it upstairs, you know. Huh? <laughs> Said some of us are proud of making it upstairs, you know. <laughs> oh, come on, Robin. I see you out there with Listen, it, it, it started with my son-in-law's dad when he got into biking in being in shape at 60. He's now 68 and he still does the bike portion. So, yeah. yeah there's my father-in-law ran the the New York Marathon like five or six times into his sixties. Yeah. Also, he was probably the last person to finish, but. Uh, well, my husband said he's he's going. He told the girls this weekend he's sixty next year and did the Montreal Marathon at twenty, and he's going to try to get in for his sixtieth. He goes, I'm going to write them this letter. <laughs> <laughs> 
please let me in. So anyway, so anyway. beside that, uh, not not much. Great. A lot, but not much. <laughs> well, it's good to see everyone. I see we also have Kumar in the background yeah. hiding behind the, the cloak of his um, name. Uh, I mean welcome, Kumar. Anyway, I guess we'll get started. We have sort of, a, I'd say, well, what, what I surmise to be hopefully a short agenda. Um, so we certainly should be done with, within an hour. Um, let's start with the approval of the March 10 uh, EC minutes. I guess everyone has had a chance to take a look at it. And if you have any I, uh, comments, please let me know. Otherwise, can somebody motion to, um, to uh, pass them? please. Do I have anyone who will motion? Say it out loud. I will motion. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have a second? We have a hand up. There's a, a yellow hand up. Okay, and all in favor, raise your hand. Uh, gotcha, okay, unanimously passed, wonderful. Okay. I have written the minutes for the last two times. We did agree collectively to do the rotation. So I'm either hoping somebody will step forward and say, okay, I'll do the next one. Um, or we can just assign it by uh, alphabetical order. Anybody want to do the next the minutes for today? We have a recording of it going in progress. Okay. So I will not volunteer. I just finished a whole board for like for, or yeah, I'm, I have a board meeting in two weeks for something okay. else. I just finish hours and hours this week of this. I'm sorry. Okay. So I think we'll put Ralph in the, yeah, actually Dave can't be in, in, in this rotation because he was the one who was doing it for like a, whatever, a year. And uh, so thank you, Ralph, for doing the minutes. I recommend that you, um, you know, do it quickly so you have some thoughts in your mind uh, and that way it's, it's, it's done quick. Um, all right, um, one last thing just to think about, nothing to discuss, but uh, we will, Jeffrey Slavin mentioned that, you know, that the preferred amount of members is like nine versus seven. Um, there's a chance that we might lose a member, um, I'm not sure, but if anyone has any ideas of who could be a, a member of our committee, that'd be just something to think about in the back of your mind. Um, I'd appreciate it. Um, nothing needs to be actionable at the moment. Um, okay, moving on to the next item on the agenda. I uh, wanted to talk about two stroke gas powered machines and whether or not we have the appetite to consider that ban as well. Um, basically, in, personally inspired by they're, they're doing that in California or in the process of doing that. Um, so, you know, I have to say um, before talking about this, that um, I have started to actually. I'm jumping ahead to this, the, the to the the distributing the gla the gas power leafblower flyers. We've you know done that all around town now. Um, that I've actually started going to the landscapers. Um, when I hear the noise, I go outside with uh, an English and Spanish thing, and I go up to them and I say, "Listen, you know, in a nice way, like we have a band coming up in September. We want." everybody to start transitioning now and like across street neighbors you know i told them look your your workers don't even have any masks on or any ear um protection and you know so you know and then they started putting masks on these people that have no idea that their their health is at risk so it made me happy actually that you know i could that i was actually helping someone's health um and also i think we should if we have any extras so if you hear a noise outside, you know, I would recommend considering going out to that landscape or just sort of introducing yourself, you know, and, and these are what I just said, basically just giving it to them. Don't say, you know, just be, do it in a friendly way. You know, I'm starting to do that. I think it's a, it's a good way. Uh, people seem to know what's going on though. And they say, oh, like I, 
this backdoor neighbor was using it and the landscaper says, yes, I know it's coming up in September, but we're just, you know, and yes, I'm using all electric in the art for our DC clients. And I'm like, well, why don't you just start doing it here? And they said, yeah, maybe we will. So anyway, I just wanted to share that little snippet. Any comments about that? Just a comment on the two stroke, you know, uh, I switched over to a battery operated, you know, a mower like several years ago. And it's been great. And uh, the main problem I always had was maintaining it over the winter. And I was always having to clean the carburetor and, and get it up and running every spring. And I've not had to deal with any of that with the electric. You know, it's been <laughs> zero maintenance issues. Uh, you know, it's been perfectly fine from the size of my lawn and I have a reasonably good size one. So I highly recommend switching over to an electric or a uh, battery operated. Great. We had, we had a battery operated one and the batteries just wore down so quickly that our last lawnmower is corded and we had a hundred foot extension cord all over the yard. Um, but it's a lot lighter. It's lighter to push around and uh, cuts just as well. Yeah. Uh, we have a, I have a very powerful electric blower that we use in the, uh, the uh, late fall, like in December, and it's, you know, we have a hundred foot cord, but our landscaper is happy to use that. Um, and as far as the two stroke engines, yeah, I mean, I think it should be a nice um, extension of what we've already done. And I think it would be, hopefully it would be well received by the town council. Um, and I don't think there's anything new and different about this idea, it's just more, more, comprehensive. I mean, the science is all over the place, all over the country, all over the, you know, different municipalities are, are considering this. Um, Veronique, do you have any comments? Or Robin? As, as you may know, I don't have grass. So <laughs> at all. Uh, the other option is I believe my neighbor in front has it. No power. Don't you have something with no power at all, Robin? I do, but I actually use a battery part more these days. Um, okay, so you know that's the only thing I've ever had. My dad had that. I mean, we just—I've never had a real <laughs> electric one, except I think one house, one of the house we had in D.C. where we hired people. But I think in terms of noise, one of the things that I'm seeing with the landscapers is that they came in gang. <laughs> you know, so I don't know, like there's, you know, and they have these huge ones, so. Do they have, does it exist to stroke for these huge commercial ones? Like the types that you're talking about? I, I have no clue. Well, the two stroke engines are the ones, is, is a type of engine that's used for the leaf blower, which is a very loud yeah. in the fashion. And, and okay. also the other one that it's used primarily for is the weed whackers. Yeah. That's okay. I think that's most it. most mowers that are sold now are four stroke. I, some, I mean, yeah. it, it may be residents who own old two stroke mowers who be might be might be most affected actually, <laughs> because it's the old mowers that are two stroke. Okay, um, so uh, I guess my question is more: uh, if if you had a band like this, does does that work for landscapers that have a technical option? Yes, they do have a alternative. They have battery powered weed whackers. If that if a weed whacker, and what about for? The mowers are four stroke engines. So okay, they, so we're good. That's all I was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's not really related um, to the mowers, yeah. even though Robin brings up a point about the old mowers, but those are very more rare, I think, uh, Robin. Um, Probably I, these days, yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen a two stroke engine um, mower in a while but anyway um so it seems like people are pretty supportive of this idea um do we have any other questions or concerns i mean basically the idea is that we would recommend that the town council considers ex uh extending you know the the span of leaf blowers to all two-stroke engines Sure. Anything to <laughs> reduce that, to that noise. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I mean, if, yeah, as Robin, it's of... if as Robin says, the lawnmowers aren't a big deal, there are only a few. And if somebody maintains their lawnmower that well that it lasts that long, I'm not sure they should be penalized. And eventually they will kind of die out. The rather than uh, extending the ban to every two stroke, uh, how about if we just really focus on uh, the weed whackers? Okay. And you could, you could add that a, a, an overall ban will exist, but like much more in the future, right? Like five years from now, you know, understanding that some people have some old, like whatever. We expect in five years from now, none of, none of them will be working, right? And right. something like that. Two stroke. Okay, I think, uh, I think, I mean, I think pretty much this is sort of a mute point in the sense that I don't really think there are any two stroke lawn mowers anymore, but even still, to respect uh, Ralph's thoughts, I think we can just sort of make it to extend it to, to two stroke weed whackers um, and not have to sort of make it sort of, um, cause that's really the only other two stroke engine. Um, and also I do think that chainsaws are two stroke engines and people, the tree, the tree people need chainsaws that are two strokes. So I think we whackers is probably the way to go. All right. I have, I have a battery operated chainsaw. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's, it's not a big one, it's a 14 inch, but it does all the, you know, the, the pruning and that kind of stuff you need to do. I'm not gonna uh, top down a big tree. So yeah, right. it's absolutely pushed over to a battery system. Right. I, I think I think you still have to have a um, engine, a, a, a nice engine for uh, tree cutting, yes. uh, whether it's two stroke or four stroke on a cha chainsaw. Uh, they're, they're just the energy density is a lot greater uh, on on a yeah, basic ice like engine than it is on a battery um, and. You don't normally need all that power, which is why batteries are good for all the other lawn tasks. But when it comes to cutting down a tree, then you really do need that power. And that's why the internal combustion engines are the right tool for that. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, I think we're ready to make a motion to, for, uh, to extend the, the band to um, two stroke Weed whackers, does someone want to make a motion? Please. I'll do Go it. Ahead. Go ahead, Ralph. Um, what you just said, I'll, I'll figure it out how to write it in the minutes. Don't have to do the word smithing right now. Okay, great. Um, do I have a second? Okay, Veronique, thank you. And uh, can we all Please uh, vote yes by raising your hand. Okay, we got it unanimous again. Excellent. All right, moving on. Next item is- Quick question on that though. Are we just moving, making a motion that it's a good idea or do we wanna have a time, a time frame? I mean, my, my thought was to recommend that they ban it immediately. So, you know, upon, upon the council's review and voting. So, I mean, that's sort of pretty much how all the recommendations are that it should. Well, we, would, we would probably put some kind of date on it so as to give people warning. Um, in okay. Case. This uh, leaf blower thing has gone on for years. Right. So I don't. So we can do it for, um, you know, September 2023. That gives people a chance to wear them out and buy new ones. Okay. Is that how does that sit with everyone else? Anybody have any objections to uh, September 1, 2023? Veronique, you like that? Was that a yes? Okay, I guess that's a yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry, I need to, I'm on something else. I need to double check, so. 
I, you know, I'm fine. I think that's a good idea. I, think, I don't want to, you know, it took us a while to get everybody uh, aware of what we're doing before. So I think 23 is the proper timing to give people a chance to know what's going on. Okay, excellent. Okay, so then please make the recommendation uh, wording to include that, Ralph. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Ralph, for that thought. And then now the next subject is basically what's uh, called recycling corks, natural corks. I've been, I've been uh, contacted. I get these emails from different people uh, around town asking, how, you know, saying, sharing ideas to make our town more sustainable. And this person whose name is Laurent uh, Guyanand, um, and he has, I'll just read his letter. I'm a Somerset resident on Warwick Place. I have personal and professional interest in wine and sustainability. In that con context, my small business is sponsoring a natural wine cork recycling program called ReCork. The sponsorship entails managing a point of collect of collecting and sending the corks in bulk to California for reuse in multiple industries, such as sh shoe soles, insulation for houses, et cetera. These types of applications replace those from petroleum-based foams and products. With this email, I would like to ask the town of Somerset to allow me to put a small bin next to the entrance of the Somerset Town Hall for the purpose of collecting used natural wine corks there's no cost for the town of Somerset. I will take care of gathering the corks collected at the town hall and shipping them bulk on a regular basis. Thank you so much for your consideration and for presenting the idea to the council. Don't hesitate to call me if you have any questions. Best regards. So they basically want to, this person basically wants to, <laughs> is recommending that the town considers placing one of his boxes or their boxes. Um, somewhere near the front door to collect um, corks. Any comments, thoughts? Three things. <laughs> First of all, I think it's a great idea. Okay. Second thing, I think that why don't we encourage him to contact Somerset School as well? Because the number of kids who come in every single day whose parents were drinking wine last night, I think he'd get more at the school. Um, and the third is, Corks are compostable, so they can go in the uh, in the white buckets. Although this is better, mm -hmm. it's more like repurposing as opposed sure. to I'm all for it. Composting, yeah. Nice comments. Um, anybody else want to respond to Rob or add? I, I am, it seems like a no-brainer. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't do it. If the person wants to take the effort and and take the initiative. Why shouldn't we support it? Thank and maybe you. he's our next member of the committee. And maybe, yeah, there you go. Um, Veronique, any comments, questions? Um, no, not really. I think he, you know, he's, he's doing something original. I just don't know how much he'll collect. Um, yeah. And, you know, personally for the viability of a small company that can kind of work, but you know, you almost have to have another way that's more direct for people. For schools, you know, I don't see a problem, but I could see that the school, you know, is related to wine, blah, 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 might not want to do it. So, you know, he may have to find right. an, an, an other, uh, another event, you know, venue. Um, the, the, the thing we need to, is that something that would be outside, I think then it's efficient, right? It's just like a long tube maybe that people put outside. And then maybe then it's accessible to other like nearby neighborhoods. Well, you know, I think it's- support. If it's not outside, it's useless because like Monday to, you know, the days that it's open doesn't really- Well, the cork receptacle, he's, it, he's um, recommending it's outside the town hall, like on yeah. the porch. Okay. Um, or, yeah. Yeah. And as far as the, the school is concerned, I think, you know, what I would probably do, Ralph, is just write that person an email and say, you know, and you might sorry. also, what's that? If he's making all this effort, it's yeah. just a suggestion that he contact them as well. Right. Yeah. What about the libraries? But that would be sort of a separate email yeah. unrelated to our uh, activity. To our thing. True. Okay. So um, does somebody want a motion um, that we 
go ahead and recommend the town council consider and putting this cork recycling bin in the uh, on the front porch of the town hall. Please. Okay, Ralph. <laughs> Second. Okay, second. I guess you're back. Ralph's basically saying what I, what I said is what the motion is. Okay. Yeah. And everybody in favor, uh, raise your hands. Uh, Veronique, we lost you. Her hands are in her lap. There, there she is. Thank you, Veronique. Okay, moving on. Um, We'll skip this one. It has to do with something. I was hoping Patty was going to join us about tree planting activity to celebrate Arbor Day. I don't really know much about what this topic is. And I was hoping her to, to talk about this. So let's come back to that. Maybe she'll join us in the next half hour. Um, next item is compost crew update. So I'll start. Maybe Robin can jump in if you so choose. But or hope was that they would, the town council would hope, would consider an opt-out program, which we recommended. And then I was informed by Matt that the extra amount necessary, assuming everybody joins, the, the remaining households would, um, which would, would require an additional $36,700 annually for the town to support a more comprehensive composting. So originally I was told by the town council that they didn't want to consider it because it wasn't, uh, it, the, the, the contract doesn't expire till June. And that was this, they sold me that four or five months ago, but then now we got close to it. Now they say we don't have money to do it. So maybe I just <laughs> didn't follow protocol carefully because, um, it seems like we just missed an opportunity. Maybe Robin, you can jump in and share your two cents about that. Well, yeah, I mean, right. There, there are two pieces of one-hour budget process and, and I don't think opt-out's a good idea and I'll explain why in a minute. But you don't think what is? Opt-out is a good idea and I'll explain okay. that in a moment. Um, oh, right, yeah. So that will lead into the pay for trash idea. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, so uh, it, it's, uh, we're nearing the end of uh, fiscal year 22 at the moment. Um, and so most of our 22 money is accounted for. And we just established a budget for 23 in which we tied in the compost amount at current levels, which is about $27,000 for the 188 odd households that are currently composting. And that can see a little growth in it which is tends to happen year on year, but it can't see a big growth in it on our current budget. We'd have to find money elsewhere for that. So that's, that's what Matt is talking about then. The 23 budget, which has just been passed, doesn't have money in it for the 36,000 for opt-out. Why I don't think it's a good idea, as I mentioned to you on the phone, is what you tend to get with it is under-motivated people. In other words, um, people who have not um, actively sought to compost, but are given a compost bin um, because they didn't opt out. And what are they going to do with it exactly? It means they have to change their behavior in order to compost at this point. And are they motivated to change their behavior? Uh, and that's, that's the issue. The alternative that I've seen does work is called well, originally pay as you throw, we're now calling it save as you throw. And the principle is that uh, the town buys the, well, I mean, there are different ways to implement it, but the simplest way of thinking about it is the town buys bins of two different sizes, big bins and little bins, and makes them distinctive so that the trash company will only pick up landfill trash from the big and little bins. And then you rent bins as a resident and you rent your mix of bins, uh, just one little bin or one big bin or a big bin and a little bin. And you price big bins at more than little bins. Um, and what happens then is that people have an incentive to reduce their number of bins or to only have a little bin instead of a big bin. 
And so they're looking for other ways to dispose of their trash rather than in landfill. And that's when composting can seem to be motivating. Oh, I can put it in compost. That gets it out of landfill trash. That saves me money. So that, uh, that has been implemented in something like 25% of cities and counties in this country already um, uh, successfully and the various studies have been done that show it does reduce landfill trash and increase recycling and composting successfully. So I would see that as a more desirable option to think about than um, opt out. The other thing it does is it takes paying for landfill trash out of property taxes where it now is and makes it a direct fee to pay for land for uh, landfill trash and that actually is a fairer system it means that those people who have more trash pay more money um, and it's also the kind of system that most other municipalities actually currently use um, we are very different in that we pay for our trust services through property taxes entirely. So I had two quick questions to that. One is, does our, is there a, uh, does good, good um, company who picks up our trash and recycling, would they, could they be able to, to do this type of service where they? Yeah, I can't imagine they wouldn't. I mean, you've, you've just got to tell them that you're only going to pick up from the yellow bins, however you've made the distinctive, the, you know, the town of Somerset yellow bins. Um, and that's all they have to do. And I don't, that's just a simple instruction. I don't think that's a challenge. But you're saying that if I put less money, I mean, aren't that, I thought you were indicating that each house is, has to be weighed when it's- pre- No, 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 no. I mean, there are, as I said, there are different safe as you throw systems and you can buy expensive trucks that um, will weigh the trash and have set it to, individual account of the household that's weighed with a great software program that's built into the truck. Uh, we, we're not doing that, that's too expensive for us. We, we, um, a, a simpler method is simply big bins and little bins, uh, and that's also used. Um, and so- uh, So it's a collective measurement of our whole town, of landfill and compost. Well, no, it, 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 well, ultimate, it, it's, it, you're not measuring anything. You're, all you're doing is you're renting a small bin and you can only put so much stuff into a small bin and therefore it is on average a lot lighter than a large bin where you can put a lot more stuff into it. So you are putting less trash into the truck when you're using a small bin I, than when you're using a large bin. I, so I think there's a few principles there that actually we've talked about look, looking at things holistically um, with the next contract. Um, pay pay for you know how much trash you have. Landfill trash is absolutely fine as a concept. I just think the little big big bin is just one of the options that's out there. I don't know. I think in Itaca they paid for their bags, like different. Yeah, you know, right. I mean, that's that's where they way, there, are, there are different ways to do it. There's different ways of doing it, and I think it's important once you dis- first of all you decide on a policy that is based on you know, size of how much you sent to landfill. That being said, I actually do not, I, I think it will take time to get to that transition and to facilitate the change in behavior. That's where personally, when I suggested the, to everybody, you know, everybody gets access. I think about it about access to a compost access, like almost force access to the composting bin. It's because actually that's, I don't believe that it's only the people that are involved in a household, you have kids. So, you know, if instead of, it it would be very efficient then for someone to go to the kids in Somerset and start talking about the importance of composting. I can tell you that if the compost bin in there, they're gonna make their parents do it. So I'm not, I, you know, this is where I think like, I think I have some neighbors on the street that just didn't understand it was an opt-in. They didn't do it by a little bit of laziness. So for me, I, I think, you know, it's, it's part of the transition to get everybody one, because when you're gonna go through that big uh, change, 
it's still going to be, let's say, big bin, little bin. Your objective as a town is still going to be to limit land, landfill, even if people pay. Because people have the amount, people here have the money to pay. So it's actually not that that's going to make the change. They need the habit to change. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't see why that rules out um, the, the idea of an uptown program. You know, personally, I would force it. But it was just like, that's like not an option. In Quebec, it's forced. Forced yeah, what? It's everybody has to compost and they making, you know, big, every city is, you know, getting a commercial size composters, testing what works in our city, giving everybody, when, when I recycled in my apartment, they're giving me purple bags, uh, blue bags for recycling and composting an orange bag and I can throw this down the chute and they do the splitting later on. It's forced, it's a law. I need, I have a, as a citizen of a community, I have a responsibility to be environmental. And this well, is where I, can, I think I can, we've got it wrong. All I can say is it's not the American way, but. <laughs> no, I know, but we've got it. No, no, I think the Americans have changed during COVID and during now. There's, there's a climate emergency. There's a waste emergency too. It's all part of it. So okay. why is it that we will facilitate? You know, I think our role is to facilitate people putting less in landfill and not okay. just why it's going to cost you more if you have more. It's going to cost you more if you have more and you have a family of four for five years at home. So yeah. I'm, you know. All right, Veronique. Thank I don't you believe that. Talks, I want to hear some other comments yeah. too. Um, go ahead, Ralph. Well, I'm, I'm just, the, the budget's just been done. So any change that we make in composting or recycling or trash is not going to be made for a year. Um, this is the first I've heard of some of the ideas that Robin has brought up, and we're just a few people. Um, you know, maybe we need to study it more, talk about it more, dedicate a meeting to it, mm -hmm. um, and then come up with some ideas. It doesn't have to be done at this meeting. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that I think we can do is encourage people to compost, people who don't know about it, for instance. Um, and the more people who volunteer, who opt in, when it's an opt in system, the, the less difference there will be mm -hmm. cost wise for an opt out program. So, you know, maybe, maybe we kind of close maybe, that gap. Maybe we can have some type of forum about composting and, and people can come and we can do a survey or something to get people more activated about the idea. Dave, do you have any ideas? I think that you know, we need a little bit more thought on it. Um, I'm not quite following uh, Robin's uh, idea, but I'm fully supportive of ways to incentivize uh, a less materials getting into the uh, trash stream and encouraging uh, uh, composting. I, I'm open to new ideas. I'm not sure uh, if any education will necessarily change people's behaviors on composting, uh, but I think that some kind of outreach might be useful. I just don't have a good idea on it at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll send you all a link. Montgomery County is considering moving to a save as you throw um, system uh, for the county trash system and they're um, some way along the way to do that. And they've got a uh, website that had a whole presentation on save as you throw. And I'll send that around to the yeah. committee so you see what it is. Um, yeah, no, I, I think the idea generally is good. I just, you know, really sincerely, if we're going to ban blowers, you know, and ban other things, I don't know why we can't get people to understand that same community. Like, yeah. you know, we can't force them to do this too. So I'm just like, the county actually is considering compulsory composting. I got the same concerns about compulsory composting that I have about opt out, which is uh, you get too many under motivated people. Right. Um, and you don't want to be just throwing away money. It comes with time, it's habit, but that's okay. We've got to sell it. So that I agree. So it, if it hasn't been sold enough, sold like understood as good in the town, we should do it. I really think the kids can have a big part. You know, it's like the joke of scraping all your- I, 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 would, I would love to do an analysis of the 
uh, forty five percent of households who are currently composting, what percentage of the homes with kids are composting? And I suspect that that's very parallel. <laughs> No, maybe there is a survey to understand who's left oh, and yeah. who's in to, um, I know we have surveyed people in the past through the town uh, newsletter, but maybe that's a step. That's I, think a, I think a survey of some sort, it could be very helpful. And yeah, um, that's a good idea. I think what I'll do is I'll, maybe I'll draft like some questions and then I'll send it around and then you guys can like yeah. edit it and sort of, yeah. and we'll sort of, maybe find some poignant questions that, you know, might be, um, you know, illuminate the problem more clearly. I, it, my, I think that this is something slightly broader. Uh, I, I don't, uh, I'm against what you're suggesting, but I think we need to get people to kind of uh, make it visible. And I know this is not just a Somerset thing, although we could probably put them at the town hall or at the pool. You know, if you go to Quebec, if you go to a lot of European locations, you'll see four bins, you know, where there's one trash, you know, you know, uh, can, you know, in the United States. Yeah. And Even on know, the street. It, on the street, just there along the street. Public. Public. And you know there why? Are two in downtown Bethesda. Yeah. Right. Well, that's well, good that we're starting to see that, but it's like you know it, why have we been doing this forever? Getting people to understand that there is composting. You know, uh, but even, but it's, it's an education. Uh, it's, we have taken on at our community, our religious uh, community, after our events, you know, try to make them compost, you know, uh, everything be composted. And it's still very hard to get people to understand what is compostable and what is not. You know, it's just, it's a real hard concept to get across. People struggle with what's recyclable too. Exactly. Even in my family, which is, you know, so environmentally conscious. I still you know. struggle with what's recyclable and I'm on the Solid Waste Advisory Committee of the County and it still foxes me, so trust me. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I think composting is easier in terms of- Composting is a lot easier, yes. Anything organic is compost. Yeah. So, I think that's one step, actually. It's almost like a joke. If you have a hard time recycling, composting is a, you know, <laughs> right. is yeah. a joy. <laughs> Well, that's actually okay. So I think we have some general ideas. Let me draft up some questions for a survey. Um, it seems that could be it'd be a nice to get a pulse of our town about composting with the survey, and then at our next meeting we can we can react to that. All right, let's move on. We have it's eight forty. Um, is that okay? Do you like that idea, Robin? What we're sure, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, the B update. So um, I can say some things that maybe um, Robin can also, but basically um, we do have somebody who is willing to do it. Elizabeth Harris, I've already told you about that. The town still has some concerns about bee stings. Um, Robin and Steve have recommended that our committee have like a forum of some sort where we bring some experts in to just talk about beehives. Um, and to that um, suggestion, I've, I, I've asked Elizabeth Harris to make some recommendations of local experts. And she's given me like two or three people that are uh, you know, either um, manage, manage bees in public properties in Montgomery County, or just very knowledgeable about bees. So I've already got some candidates for an upcoming forum um, I guess the hope is that having a, a more in-depth process that people can learn about bees, there can be less concerns about, I guess, bee stings is, is one of the things. Um, bees don't sting unless they are basically, you are going after their, uh, their uh, the bee stings people are, are from yellow jackets. And I've explained that to my fellow council members and they still react. And they worry about kids um, attacking the beehives um, as well because they're on public property, not on private land, which I go, um, it's up to the kids. And if they get stung, it's their own fault at that point. But that's that's not a very good reaction, I realize. Um, I know. Anyways, and bees are all around us all the time. So, you know, I, I, I won't say anything more. It's just, 
it's a silly. Yeah, I agree. Um, and if I were to tell the story to the big communities in Africa that I support our Planet Earth project, they would find it a very odd conversation. But anyway, we are here. We're sort of a liability um, um, motivated um, or influenced society. So, and, so, I, I, so also, when... and we missed the flow, by the way. The what? The flow. What's you know, that? That's this right now is the time when the most of you know the uh, blossoms are out. Yes. Right. Yes. And so you know, yeah. uh, it's in a sense, yes, you can install them later, but you know, it, the best time to install them is early spring. Correct. We've missed we've missed this year now. It's it's passed, but Elizabeth has offered to um, come and in, install like in the winter time coming up. So we're going to have to delay. Um, also, you know, Jeffrey has indicated that they have to sort of go through the, the normal protocol or not. I don't know about whether they have interviewed enough beekeepers and chosen it in, in, a, in a proper way. I don't know, Robin, is that still an issue? Well, yeah, I mean, we've in the interim have now got a procurement policy and he's saying this has to apply here. I, not necessarily is the answer because there isn't a fifteen thousand dollar exception. If an action costs under fifteen thousand dollars, then we, the procurement policy does not require it be competed. Right. And obviously, this does is under fifteen thousand dollars, and so therefore you don't necessarily need to right. apply the procurement policy. Zero, zero cost. Right. Jeffrey wants to apply it, however, um, as he thinks there may be opportunities for others um, to. Um, serve the town in this way. So I have one question I'll put out there for whatever expert comes. There's a lot of, I don't know where, where I'm seeing this, readings that I'm seeing that in May, I think you're, because it's this blossom season, you're supposed to maybe tell people not to mow their lawn. I did that already in the, uh, this most recent uh, okay. town journal. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I did not read it. <laughs> oh my God! No, it, you know what, so me, no, no mo may. No mo may, but maybe it's where I read it, right? I'm not sure. It <laughs> doesn't matter. I'm just but it, it, it's out there, and I think it's kind of a yeah. Again, it would reduce the noise. Yeah, well, I've re recommended that people <laughs> also consider like mowing every other week as well, which would reduce the carbon footprint and noise yeah. by half in one yeah. foul swoop, which is the way I Thank do you. my lawn. Thank anyway, you. okay, so that's that. And I think our last item for tonight is World Environment Day and in that connecting that with the Shredding Day event, which is going to be on June 18th. Yes, Saturday. So we're going to have the same event we had last year. Um, Dave has, has already um, indicated that the LED light guy is gonna be showing up again, which is great. He was very pleased last year. Like he said, it was like so successful, right, Dave? Yeah, yes, they were very positive. They thought that you know, it was a great event for them. Um, and I thought we could also invite people with electric bikes maybe in addition to cars, uh, just anything that's electric they can bring it to the event if they want to share it. Um, Talk to the tennis players though. What's that? Talk to the tennis players, Carrie Wofford particularly. Yeah, I talked to Carrie. She was fine with the idea of having them park their cars on the street uh, during the morning time. So we'll have the full lot. Um, you know, part of me, to be perfectly honest, is still a little bit concerned that that road coming in it's not a two-way road. It's very difficult to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't feel, even if we have an empty parking lot and the trash, the shredding truck is there, I don't see the, the issues of traffic flow completely solved. Yeah, the parking lot of the pool is but much better suited for that, but the, the tennis court seemed to be the desirable place. So, well, why have we not, isn't there some reason we can't use the pool 
Well, you can't do it during in season because um, obviously it's full of cars using the pools in season, but you can do it. Right. right. So maybe we should consider doing it out of season in the future. So it's safer. Yeah. I think so. Maybe we could do it like in May next year. You know Early what I mean? May, yeah. Early May. Okay, so does anybody have any other things that they want they would like us to consider for that day to make it? I mean, my personal feeling about World Environment Day and Earth Day is that like, you know, I just you might have seen one of these Mother Earth emails we just sent out, but I, I, I think every day has to be Earth Day. I mean, the idea that people take time out for one day to be special is I think a complete hoax, um, you know, so I, I personally don't need to celebrate or um, you know, delineate this day. Um, I'm, I'd rather have do all the things that we're doing, which will have impact on our town and our you know, region that happens daily. Uh, any thoughts? Well, I agree with you. I mean, it, they, they are, but they, they, they kind of highlight what people are doing so as to, they're meant to be education so that others can learn from them. And in that sense, they have value. Yeah. I mean, they do all these things now, you know, Black History Month, and I don't know, it, 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 I feel I'm inundated, but I guess all to raise awareness, there's nothing negative about that. So. Um, I mean, I, I thought of the idea of maybe bringing the, um, the, the, um, the MEP, uh, inflatable booth. Does everyone remember that booth that I had it at the Somerset race one year? It's like a big, huge inflatable, which is people can go inside and read about what people around the world are doing more sustainably. Um, so we could hypothetically put it down there and that could just sort of have a big visual splash. Um, we could, I don't know whether there's any electricity down there, but I guess we could run a wire from the garage or something like that. Um, any, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind, I, I don't like, we could do that on the grass on the far side. If we want to, what do you, do you have any thoughts about that? Yes or no? Yeah, if there's, if there's space for it there, sure, it'd be a good idea. Okay. Um, and typically with that booth, we put a set up a table with post-it notes and people can actually write on the post-it notes, like what their next sustainable action is. And then they take it off and they, they stick it on the, the booth and then people see a whole bunch of post-it notes um, on there. And that sort of, that actually can be very effective, believe it or not. Um, we've had that, we've done that on many, different places like at EAU campus, we did it at the National Building Museum multiple times. And it's actually, it gets people pretty ramped up and excited to sort of see all the, you know, the commitments and they read what other people are doing. Okay. Okay. So looks like we lost Veronique. Um, yeah, she sent a text. Okay. I mean, she did a chat thing. Okay. I think it's, I think we've pretty much um, have covered all the things that we need to. Does anybody have any other last items before we bring our meeting to a close? I know Kumar, you've said a few things in this. Um, I didn't quite understand. You apply here. Yeah, I, I don't know if that rebate program is still in effect, but. I just thought it might be something you would want to yeah, publicize. Yeah, right, that's the Montgomery County rebate program to churn in a gas-powered leaf blower for an electric leaf blower. And um, I think landscapers should be interested in it. Um, right. So what is your suggestion that, that um, maybe I can write about it in the next article, let's say, and that way I can, homeowners can let people um, 
know about this and share that with share share with their landscapers. What um, Kumar, if you'd be kind enough to like um, write that stuff and email it to me so that I can sort of maybe transfer it into the uh, a document where I'm writing this article and I can add that as like one of the paragraphs. Is that okay? Sure, I'll send it to you. I, I don't know if it's still in effect because the deadline was March and then they extended it, but I couldn't find the new deadline, but I'll look for it. Okay. I mean, if you wouldn't mind doing that little research to see whether it's actually still um, viable, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, guys. Um, Thank you everybody for tonight. Um, we've finished under an hour. Yeah, amazing. Hey, I have a question, um, Barton. I, I delivered all of Trent Street and Uppingham Street, uh, but I noticed you didn't have anybody doing the, I think there are like three houses on River Road. Uh, oh. Would you like me to do those? Yes, please. I, uh, I'm actually unaware of that. Yeah, that's my bad. Thank you. Okay, I, I, I don't mind doing it. I, I'm glad I have enough. Yeah. So, I'll do so it. just as uh, you know, Donna said that, you know, she sent it out and, you know, she didn't send, she didn't pass out many Spanish leaflets, flyers, because people didn't want them. But, you know, the whole point was that you hand out the Spanish and you tell the, the owners to share it with their landscapers. So, you know, I just wanted to reemphasize that that's the main reason why we have it in two languages because you know many of these um, landscapers are Spanish speaking. So anyway, I just wanted to reemphasize that. I know it's obvious. Right. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye. 56.